Hi my friends, a very good morning. It was so hard to get up today. It is unbelievable. We had such a heavy rain overnight and you know when it hits the roof it can get really loud and it's difficult to sleep then and knowing about that you will have one of the most boring weather conditions you could ever get in landscape photography didn't make things easier to be honest so and we look around we yeah we have winter we have uh, everything covered with snow and i mean this doesn't look all the bad on the, the first sight but the snow everything it, it went down a little bit and due to the rain everything got washed down from the trees and they are totally bleak in the moment so it's difficult for doing woodland photography or something like that also vista photography is not all do yeah i mean it doesn't really all in all it doesn't really look uh, all, all too appealing to be honest so what i thought is and you guessed it already i knew about these weather conditions already yesterday so i'm here on purpose and what i thought is what you can do is you can go anywhere where these conditions are not really the biggest issue and what i thought is a water scene maybe when you have any brook or a bigger creek in your area this is a really fantastic idea uh, maybe taking some intimate shots there something like that or the best thing where to climb down a gorge and to photograph waterfalls down there the only problem is in the moment i'm not able to climb down a gorge to do many injury and so what i do is i'm hiking we have a fantastic waterfall and I mean in the gorge we had the, the uh, advantage that we don't have the, the biggest area down there so where we don't have all too much of snow and at the waterfall I, I think we'd have a little bit more of snow and we'll get a little bit more difficult but however it doesn't matter I'm really excited about this landscape photography adventure today and I would say let's see what's possible today Everything's bleak, everything's bleak out there. Ah, oh, what a beauty. Ah, it looks really fantastic. Uh, the question is just, should I stay here now and try for taking a photograph or should I go to my originally planned spot there was a big waterfall? I, I think what, what I will do is I just will take a quick shot with my phone, just a, a not a test shot, just a, a remember shot for later that I can have a look how it looks here and yeah, so that I get an idea maybe if there's something uh, possible to photograph to be honest. Uh, let me show you, I will, I will show you the composition. So we have uh, this patch here, the left hand side, and I like this, I can use this here. I, I'm not, I want to go wider here with my, with my uh, focal length, so usually you would see it here. And I like also these, uh, these rocks here at the right hand side, so maybe we can use this for our foreground. Just with a, with a wider, uh, something like that here, maybe something like that. And we have to imagine that it goes up there then. And the snow here at the left hand side doesn't look all too well. It will, it will draw our eyes and uh, lead us out, out of the frame. So I'm not 100% happy here. Uh, let's, let's put it in that way again. I mean, I like this, uh, this S-curve back there, but here really lots of distracting elements and the snow is also not the, the most appealing thing here, but I mentioned this already. I will say, let's go to the big waterfall. And on the way to the waterfall, it's always a good idea to observe a little bit how everything looks. So when you have a look a little bit more up there, you see that we have a tiny bit of mist up there. And I mean, when you know this spot already, you, or if you have seen image maybe already from it, it doesn't really matter. But in this case, you can use this information to collect here on the way to the waterfall and to think already about or to focus already about a composition or a story maybe you want to tell up there. And I also had a look at the water down there, how much water we have there, and also the color of the water is interesting. And the bad thing for the days, 
and it didn't rain for a longer time we always get lots of dirt lots of mud in so everything looks a little bit more brown and so on Oh, what a beautiful place. It is absolutely amazing. And the first important thing is what I do when I arrive to a waterfall spot, after having a cup of tea, of course, <laughs> I have a look at the key features of the waterfall. And when we have a look here, I mean, it's amazing. We have this fantastic uh, mountain face with all the waterfalls coming down. So just this thing, having so many different waterfalls here coming down is already a, is already a feature what defines the spot. But we have also lots of, of uh, water cascades down there, little water steps, and we have also uh, lots of uh, uh, snow patches, or really lots, uh, some snow patches there and where. We have to be careful here because they will be the brightest parts in our composition if we decide to include them. And this is the question now. Uh, what will we include? What will we not include? And finally, um, how we see a composition or that we see a composition always depends on uh, the story, the story we, we finally see and I mean story finding on uh, places like that is not really difficult because yeah the water is floating, there is a movement in, there is always any kind of storytelling here and this is why I think waterfall photography is really easy. So I just have to think about which story I want to tell. The story about floating water is the easiest thing but it could also be that I see any other key elements to, uh, which could add to my story to tell another story and this is what I'm currently thinking about and the next thing is also to think about which elements distract my story and which I should not include and then I will decide uh, yeah, for my composition. The only thing what I, what I <laughs> realized already is that yeah, it's, it's quite slippery so I would not be able to climb down here for instance totally impossible so I'm really limited here in my, my possibilities but yeah, I think I will maybe look a little bit more uh, down there. So now I found the composition and I hope you can hear me, it's so loud here. By the way, some of you might recognize this spot. I've been here, I think, yeah, in the end of 2020, something like that. Or, uh, yeah, something like that. And, yeah, I'm really happy with all these waterfalls up there. And I decided to include most of them into my frame. But I have to really be careful here, because when you look down here, it, it was not so easy to, to bring this uh, tripod here up to this rock here. And it's really slippery here, so... I think I really deserve a like here at this point, so I would really appreciate it. Thank you, my friends. So, however, what, I, what I've done is, I use these rocks here at the left-hand side to lead into the frame. I use this pool here in the foreground, and also this rock here to give a little bit of a sense of depth into our composition. And I also have this horizontal rock here that breaks our, our flow a little bit. And I also look for, for this uh, ice line here at the right hand side, what, what gets from the, from, the, from the top right in. Just this, uh, this last piece up there, this left, hand, this left hand piece up there. And at the left hand side, I use this amazing waterfall back there. Also to, to lean into our frame from the, from the corner. And yeah, I'm so happy with, with, this, with, this, uh, with this waterfall. It's so amazing, it's such a beautiful place. I tried to use a circular polarizer, I played around, made a difference, I thought it would be an advantage, I, I put it up, I tried a test shot, I was not happy with it. Um, it it's really, I, I made already a video about, about polarization, how to use, when to use a polarizer, if you're interested about that, I will link it up there. In this case, it was just, it didn't add anything to my composition. So I screwed it down afterwards again. And yeah, I use the ISO just to, to regulate uh, the, the shutter speed I, I want to go. And I try it between a sixth and an eighth of a second and I, I will go for something like that. So I would say, and let's be careful that the camera doesn't drop into the water. I would say 
Let's make the click. the biggest obstacle here I mean it's a bigger area here but we have always so much of spray here I mean it also rains but we have always so much of spray here due to the waterfalls so I think it got washed away already yeah maybe some days ago or something like that so it's really not a big a big problem here you just have to be careful with the last batches there and where that they, they don't throw too much and what I found now is I, I'm at the same camera position actually and I just um, increased my focal length a little bit and I, I, I photograph more in that direction now and I'm really happy with these rocks here in my foreground and this, uh, this uh, cascade here at the left hand side I use it to lead into our frame we have this amazing waterfall here at the distance and I also use uh, this waterfall here at the right hand side this uh, yeah, subtle uh, water was go, going down up there. This looks really fantastic with all these uh, yeah, thin lines of water. It's really, really amazing. And yeah, all, all the rocks here, the white rocks, it's really amazing. It is so beautiful here. Yeah, I'm speechless. <laughs> and what I'm doing here, I use these greens here in the foreground, these uh, mossy rocks here, to balance my scene here with these uh, rocks here at the left hand side, at the left top. And this, this looks really fantastic and it really adds some composition. And yeah, same as before, I don't use any filters, no circular polarizer, also no ND filters by the way. And yeah, it, it's dark enough. I, I even have to increase the ISO a little bit to, to get to the shutter speed I want to have. And I would say, let's put the dial down here and let's make the click. I found one more composition and this place is truly really absolutely amazing. And that's so sad that I don't have uh, weight trousers with me because it were really fantastic to walk into this uh, brook here. Although I'm not really sure how deep it is to be honest. Um, I'm here with the camera position and I decided to come down a little bit more this, uh, this brook here and to use this uh, waterfall here in the foreground um, and also these uh, vanishing lines of, of the, the water here pulling us into the frame. I also use this uh, little rock in the foreground and as you guessed it maybe already, I, I am really short with my focal length here. I'm at uh, I think 60 millimeters and I want to get in all, not all the waterfalls, but uh, lots of these waterfalls up there. Uh, the left one here, uh, the one beside that and I also get one at the right hand side just a tiny bit in just to tell the story of this repetition that there are much more uh, many more waterfalls and yeah, I'm really happy with this composition we have this fantastic whirlpool here in our foreground so we get really fantastic patterns into the surface of the water so this is all about getting the right shutter speed and catching the right patterns adding to our composition and it's really difficult what I do is I, I make multiple exposures and just pick out the best one at home so what I want to have is I want to have maybe something what leads to my to my rock here at the 
right hand side so that I have a nice zigzag line on the S curve or something like that. So you know it's all about to engage the viewer, to lead him around in the, in the images, it's all about the flow here. And could also be that we get some nice circles here, something like that. I'm not sure I will try for that. I will take some exposures and I will pick out the best one then for you. Oh man, what a fantastic morning. I really like the photograph waterfalls. There's no stress. Yes, all time of the world. The only thing when it's raining, it's maybe a little bit more uncomfortable, up, but yeah, it's all about the clothes you have. And you are rain protected and you have a towel like that or something like that and you can protect the camera. It's not that big as deal. So I would say, oh, I have to climb around here. It's a little bit tricky here. Everything is totally slippery. That's really difficult. And same here, I'm also at the edge here of this rock here with my dry bottom. I really do, I really do be careful here. So I would say, let's make the click. Or oh, the clicks, obviously, I will take more as I already mentioned. now with this composition and I also made a horizontal version I think you saw it already and what I've also tried to do is I tried to photograph a more minimalistic scene here from from this camera position and I, I really like this uh, rock here in our foreground and yeah there's this water coming here and all these uh, vanishing lines all pulling us into the frame and this is a really amazing amazing thing alone this just this without the backdrop without these amazing waterfalls back there is really fantastic so i would say let's put the towel down here and let's make the click Such a gorgeous morning, it's really, really amazing. And as we already mentioned, I've already been here in the end of 2020. I got out some really fantastic photographs back then. And if you're interested about that, I will link the video here for you. So my friends, give me a thumb up if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.